Hey guys, Jamie here. Welcome to week four of my DBT Skills for the Holidays series. Today we're going to be talking about time commitments, energy level, personal reserves, and how emotional sensitivity plays into the type of interactions we tend to have this time of year. If your family is like mine, you probably have two to three times the um, events and invites that you get any other month this time of year. And so if your life is normally pretty packed, it can get crazy packed this time of year. And if you do everything you get invited to, you probably find yourself completely beat and drained at the end of the season. So I've thought about the events that we got invited to and kind of divided them into three categories to talk about how to kind of approach that and think about balancing your time. For us, the first category is those things we absolutely love, that we look forward to, that are replenishing, that build us up. My two favorite things to do with the holidays are that I have a Christmas decoration day with my grandmother and my aunt. As you can see, my lovely Christmas tree behind us. Um, we did that yesterday. And so it's a family day that we spend together, just us as a family, with Christmas music and um, just being present with one another. And that's really, really special to me. I spent a lot of time with my grandmother and my aunt when I was growing up. And so getting to create adult memories with them is really important and something that's like super high priority for me. The other thing that I'm really passionate about doing this time of year is that I go to a Christmas Eve service um, at a church that I don't regularly attend, but it's a very specific service. It's the exact same every year, and it's full of traditional Christmas carols. And I just, I'm not very religious. I do consider myself a spiritual person, and having that like spiritual connecting and grounding without a, a specific message, it's really good for me. And I feel that like that's um, one of the most important things of the year that I do. I look forward to it, and it's really, really important. So that those are the things that you absolutely don't want to miss. They're um, in line with your values, they bring you joy, and they replenish your internal reserves, and they're not things that take away from you. <clears throat> the second category is the things that we kind of have to do. There are some things that we can't get out of doing, whether that's, you know, um, kids, um, recitals, which we love our kiddos, right, but sometimes uh, four hours of listening to kids plunk around on the piano isn't exactly how we want to spend our Saturday. Or it's... Um, going to our partner's family's obligations when, when they've been to ours, you know, being in reciprocal relationships, doing the things that we um, expect from those we care about so that, you know, our relationships are even. So those may not be your favorite things, but, you know, they're things that you put in your schedule because they, you know, they matter and you're going to go to them as well. The final category is the category that I would like you to think about changing. This is what I call the drainers. The things that we do and we don't necessarily have to do them, but we do them every year, and the day of, we wake up and we realize, like, I don't know why I committed to doing that, and then we dread it all day, and then we go and we're miserable, and when we get home, we've wasted an entire day of the busiest day of the year, and we've got nothing to show for it but, like, grouchiness. Um, I was talking to a friend last week, and she's like, yeah, when I was little, we always went to my aunt's house for Christmas Eve. And we did that every year. And so when I had kids, we started doing that every year. And when my kids could talk, they started saying they didn't want to do that. And I had to, I realized, like, I had to come to a point of choosing, uh, do I want to continue this thing that I've always done that I don't really enjoy that much that my family isn't enjoying? Or do I want to create my own memory that is much more in line with how I want to live my life? Now, a lot of times what this means is that we have to have uncomfortable conversations. We have to let people down that we care about, that do expect this from us because that's what we've always done. But I encourage you to think about that uncomfortable conversation. Is it going to last a couple of minutes? or And is that couple of minutes of discomfort worth getting a whole day of your life back? So many times it is, but we just we, we don't want to do those things. We don't want to let people down. But you have to realize that like, you are your own resource and you have an energy like reserve and once that's gone it's gone and so this time of year it's important to think about like what is best for me to do and sometimes it is best to avoid something that's not in your best interest if it's not bringing you joy if it's not rejuvenating you if it's depleting you it may not be where you need to be this year so if you have one of those things, I'd encourage you to think about using Cope Ahead. Plan how you're going to let this person know and go ahead and do it early, right? It's still the first week or actually it's not even December yet. So you've got time to let them down easy um, and that way like you've already taken care of it and it's not something that's weighing on you the whole holiday season. Now when you use your Cope Ahead, remember to plan for a little bit of pushback. When we change our pattern, it changes the entire pattern and that makes other people uncomfortable. So they may say something that like is slightly upsetting and that's okay because you're prioritizing your resources and that's a good thing to do. That's a healthy thing to do. 
When we think about energy, we can think of ourselves like a battery, right? That like we start out with a certain amount and as the day goes on, it tends to deplete. Sleep kind of re rejuvenates us, puts us back on track. Um, but like throughout the day, we, we use our energy. And for most of us, life is already pretty full before we get to this busy time of year. And so we're already pretty drained most of the time. And if we're running out of energy, like we can't be our best. So on top of time commitments, I also want you to think about self-care this time of year. Are there things that you can do to rejuvenate you? Short little things and some bigger things. I highly recommend right now, before it's even December, blocking out a half day somewhere in there for you to rejuvenate and catch up. So many times we have so much on our plate and we're like up till midnight trying to get it all done and we find ourselves completely drained. Give yourself a break. Give yourself a space to be human and a time to come back and say, what do I need to get grounded? Because when we're grounded, we can be our best person. <clears throat> also, if you are emotionally sensitive like I am, this time of year brings around a lot of extra interactions and a lot of extra emotional energy. Um, what we found is that like emotional sensitivity has these aspects to it, right? You have bigger emotions, you have more emotional variability, and you have a slower return to baseline. We also have tend to have more stimuli sensitivity, that we bring in more sensory data. And what that can lead to is more feelings of overwhelmness. Crowds are tough for me to begin with. The hectic crowds at this time of the year really, really wear on me. We did Thanksgiving shopping the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and I like really regretted that. It was really exhausting for me. And what it realized is I have to be very deliberate about how I approach these kinds of situations in December. I've joked with everybody in my family that I'm kind of implementing a 10 to 10 rule, that I won't step foot in a grocery store or a Walmart between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. this month. I'm just going to do my shopping in the evenings where there's less crowds. And if I have to check myself out, like that's a trade-off I'm willing to take because I can't afford to be like wasting my energy on like these just training interactions that could be planned in a different way. Online shopping for Christmas, so many people have transferred to that and I think that's a great thing because it allows you to sales shop and to, to, to avoid interactions. So are there ways to plan ahead to give yourself more more likeliness to succeed? Are there things that you can say, systems you can create that are, are for you, that are unique, that help you to be less drained? That's what all this is about, is that you can have more of your best self at the end of the season, because I really feel like this season is kind of a marathon. There's so many obligations for like two months in a row, and many of us just find ourselves drained. And so I the goal is to find yourself not drained, to be able to be mindful and present in all the things, and, and protecting yourself is a big part of that. <clears throat> so if you do that this year, if you choose to change up a pattern and go about something differently and you use your cope ahead, I'd love to hear how that turns out. Or if you've got your own personal system that's like my 10 to 10 rule, I'd love to know what that is for you. Uh, this is... I'd love to hear just your, your stories and examples so, so we can create a community. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about values and consumerism. It ties in slightly with DBT, but it's a little more um, personal. And so I hope you'll join us for that. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.